So I'm delighted to have the opportunity to speak at this event today and to share with you some of the work of the British Pharmacological Society in the area of outreach and engagement. Um, I was able to join the meeting yesterday to hear about the reflections on the impact of the uh, pandemic and how quickly we have all moved to digital and online forms of engagement. And today's theme is current successes and challenges. And we have four talks today that consider the uh, challenges in diversifying audiences and thinking about how we can make engagement more inclusive. I'm going to try to reflect the successes and challenges that the British Pharmacological Society has had as a learned society, a membership organisation. Um, we're sort of grappling with um, how we can really support outreach and engagement for our membership and what the role of membership organisations like the British Pharmacological Society really is in uh, this area. So a little bit about me before we start. Uh, I'm an academic at the University of Bath. This is the uh, most scenic view of the University of Bath, our lake. Um, and at Bath, I'm uh, an academic. I'm in the pharmacology group in the Department of Pharmacy and Pharmacology. So I'm a pharmacologist, which means I'm interested in how drugs work in the body. Specifically, I'm interested in how the brain responds to stress and how we can use that information to make new and better antidepressants and anxiety medicines. Like many people, I first began engaging the public um, with my research. Um, through the media as a way of highlighting developments in my research. And since then, I've really gained a diverse range of experience as a public engagement practitioner, including working with the Science Media Center, uh, with Understanding Animal Research, who are a not-for-profit organization uh, that work with the public. I've been a school's ambassador for them. Uh, I've participated in events like Pint of Science and Soapbox Science. This is me uh, doing the most scary bit of public engagement I think I've ever done. It's standing on a soapbox in my local shopping centre on a Saturday afternoon with only my cuddly brain cell uh, to help me. So apart from being a practitioner of public engagement, I have also share my experience with my professional community and with the public engagement community through events at the National Coordinating Centre at the NCCPE. Um, at Bath, I worked as Openness Champion on the Concordat on Openness on Animal Research, and I've been instrumental in helping us achieve leadership in openness status. Um, I've led on development of units for teaching public engagement as a uh, to our pharmacology undergraduates. But today I'm here uh, because I've been elected by the membership to the role of Vice President Engagement. And I really want to bring my experience as a practitioner uh, to bear on shaping the priorities of engagement at the British Pharmacological Society. So who are the British Pharmacological Society? Well, it's a membership organization um, that brings together clinical, academic and industry-based pharmacologists from around the world to encourage collaboration and to support, promote and advance the whole spectrum of pharmacology. Um, we're a growing organisation uh, with over 4,000 members worldwide and the photograph here shows our annual scientific conference which is the key flagship event for the society uh, where we bring together the membership and engaging with the members is also part of the brief of vice president for engagement 
The other part of the brief as Vice President for Engagement is outreach and public engagement. So why is engagement important to the British Pharmacological Society? Well, it's really central to delivering the vision of the British Pharmacological Society, shown here on the left, um, a world in which pharmacology and therapeutics drive and support progress in science, medicine, and healthcare. And written into the mission of the society is um, how we're going to achieve this, and public engagement is uh, sort of front and central in delivering this uh, 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 vision of the BPS. In terms of our current successes, we've been supporting engagement for a number of years now, and we have a number of different routes to doing that. Uh, here are four different uh, schemes that I'm going to be talking about. The Ambassadors Scheme, uh, our Engagement Grant Scheme, our engagement resources and the society uh, sponsors and funds um, engagement events beyond this. So our ambassadors scheme is uh, uh, aimed at our members and members can apply to become ambassadors. And it's really aimed at people who have a passion for sharing their science with two key roles. One is to represent the society among their professional networks, and the other is to promote pharmacology through outreach and engagement activity. We've got uh, 23 ambassadors, and around half of them are from outside the UK, including Nigeria, Uganda, Malaysia, India, Sri Lanka, Turkey, Iraq, uh, and we are currently looking to expand this network. The ambassadors are supported with uh, regular meetings and networking between themselves to share best practice, but also challenges that they're facing. They get access to £250 per annum to support their engagement activities. And the society is currently looking at how we can enhance training for this role. Alongside our ambassadors scheme, we have uh, engagement grant funding in common with other learned societies. We offer funding for outreach and engagement to our members for all forms of pharmacology and drug discovery research. The grant provides up to £1,500 for high quality in-person or digital engagement uh, that will reach a variety of public audiences. And we also support training bursaries uh, for public engagement. And what's shown here is an event that uh, is for secondary schools that taps into uh, the love of Harry Potter and uses that to uh, discuss the pharmacology of magic potions uh, in a in a gaming sort of context. And this was a, 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 a really successful event for secondary aged uh, children that was funded by the British Pharmacological Society. Um, but if we review the grant funding that we make, and obviously with grants, it's very dependent on what our members put forward. But when we review that, we often reach school audiences, but rarely any other age group. And if we're thinking about public engagement, perhaps we can do more to diversify our audiences. through our engagement grants and through direct projects of the society, we uh, develop resources for our website. And the most, the most successful example of this 
has been a project called Medicine Makers, um, which is on our website and comes with a complete sort of how to do this so that any of our members can pick it up and take it into schools and use it. And it's a resource for secondary age school kids where they can use cardboard and beads and pipe cleaners to make painkillers like paracetamol. Um, and they can think about the chemical structures, think about the processes that are involved in actually making a medicine. Um, we also have a range of um, resources around pharmacology careers that are aimed at different age group from uh, primary school through to undergraduate level that aim to address uh, common confusions but also highlight the diversity of career options in the field of pharmacology and uh, this here uh, 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 an illustration of pharmacology versus pharmacy and this is almost the top question I get asked on university open days when people come to visit with their parents what's the difference between pharmacology which is a lab-based science understanding how medicines work in the body and pharmacy which is the patient facing uh, expert in the high street uh, helping people manage how they take their medicines more effectively. The Society has also funded uh, sessions at Cheltenham Science Festival. So this is in 2021. Uh, Cheltenham Science Festival was a hybrid event for the first time. So they had real life events that were relayed live online at the same time. And this event was um, how to age well uh, with Andrew Steele, who's a computational biologist who's been looking at death statistics for uh, a large part of his career. And this is Lauren Walker, who's a uh, clinical pharmacologist and looking at the role of how cardiovascular medicines, for example, can help people enhance their healthy lifespan and reduce the risks of cardiovascular disease. We've also funded Pint of Science events, uh, contributing to this event and the Bioscience Careers Day event. So in looking forward and thinking about the challenges that the British Pharmacological Society is uh, looking at, we're really thinking about um, how we maximise the impact of our public engagement and are we really increasing the visibility and influence of pharmacology and therapeutics. So if we think about who are we engaging with? Who are the public that we are reaching? In reality, most of our effort reaches school children. Uh, some of our efforts reach uh, those people who like to go to Cheltenham Science Festival. Um, but what about people of all ages, backgrounds and communities? Can we do more uh, uh, to reach a wider audience? How are we engaging? Well, as we saw yesterday, the need to move towards digital technologies with the pandemic has highlighted that lots of people are not skilled in that area, don't really know what the uh, best routes and uh, advantages of different platforms might be. Uh, so do we need to enhance training? What about our current funding arrangements? Do we need to be more targeted and strategic in order to have more impact? Do we need to increase funding in this area? Is £1,500 um, enough to attract people to apply for our engagement grants? And, and the what should be uh, the British Pharmacological Society's focus here? Um, do we need to be more targeted and strategic in order to have impact? Should we be having specific 
calls for our engagement grants around themes that we're interested in. There's a lot of um, interest, I think, uh, brought about by the pandemic. There's a real opportunity and a positive from COVID-19 for us in that people are interested in medicines, people are interested in where they come from, the processes by which they get approved. Um, but if we think about uh, the vaccines, uh, which are medicines that have come for COVID-19. There's also a lot of misinformation and mistrust. Um, so how do we uh, help address some of that and understand where that comes from? So our approach is at, the, at this point, and this is very much something that is in development in the last 12 months and moving forward to the next year or two, to try to build a community of engaged uh, members uh, within the society that can really share best practice resources and build a community. We want to be able to train our members in effective engagement, including with digital technologies. We want to be able to reach more diverse audiences, getting beyond schools and the easy to reach, to really engage audiences with uh, medicines research and perhaps not just about how exciting pharmacology is. Um, we want to be able to use resources that are inclusive, thinking about accessibility and diversity of the resources as we develop new approaches across digital technologies and platforms that provide some opportunities uh, but also some challenges. And ultimately, we want to evaluate the activities and resources that we're using so that we know what best practice is in this area and how we can best disseminate it. So I've tried to give a flavour of what the British Pharmacological Society is doing and some of the successes we've had but the challenges moving forward. I'm really interested to hear more in today's talks about diversifying audiences and a more inclusive approach to engagement.